Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hawkinsville, First United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, it was a great weekend for uh, Georgia sports teams. The uh, UGA Bulldogs won yesterday, the Braves won last night, and the Falcons don't play today, so they can't <laughs> lose, which is fantastic. And uh, if those aren't your teams, then I hope your teams won as well, and they had a great weekend. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad that you're here today. This is the place of worship. This is God's gift to us, and we're able to give ourselves back to God in this place. And if you are a guest with us today, we welcome you. If you're watching online, thank you for taking the time to tune in and worship with us as well. Psalm 100 says this, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth, and worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We belong to God today. We are his people, and we come to worship him in this holy place. Now I'm going to invite Harley to come and bring our announcements. Thank you, Jack. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning, this chilly Sunday morning. You see we have some updates in our bulletin, and the first is trick or eat is going to be a little bit different this year. So please read the directions. If you want a bag to be delivered, you can do that. But there's a little bit of change in the way it's going to be carried out. But we're looking for a, a good turnout, and hopefully we'll have a successful trick or eat this year. The flowers this morning are given to the glory of God in appreciation of her family by Lynn Harper. <clears throat> we have the answers to last week's questions. And the one that I was really looking forward to was the pastor that was introduced as young, has hair, and sings. And you see, sir? It's not me. It's not Jack. <laughs> Many of you probably knew it. I did not. It was Marcus Tripp, and he still has hair. And so we have five new questions. So take a look at those in your bulletin. The BGs will meet tonight at 6 o'clock. Look forward to having everyone here for that meeting. Staff Parish will meet Monday, that's tomorrow, at 6. I think we have some birthdays this week. Tommy and Derry Grinstead are celebrating an anniversary, 46 years. Congratulations to, to Tommy and Derry. Thomas and April Gibson are celebrating 14 years on the 20th. William and Morgan Bembry are celebrating 10 years, and Caroline Peavy has a birthday on the 23rd. I may have missed some birthdays or anniversaries. Does anyone have one that I missed or another announcement for us? Thank you. And to go along with uh, the the scripture that he read, the Psalms, uh, our opening hymn is Come Christians Join to Sing. So let's join together on page 158. If you care to use your hymnal, we'll sing all three verses, 158, as we stand.
join me in our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. with our friends and families. as we move into our time of prayer this morning I invite you to uh, take a look at the back of the bulletin you'll see our prayer list on there you can be in prayer for those people those families and those situations this week uh, let us go to God in prayer at this time Heavenly Father we are so grateful for this chance to be near you today to worship you to celebrate you to declare how important you are to us for us to lose focus of that during the weeks. Every Sunday in this place, we are reminded of what is truly important. You are God. We are not. And our lives belong to you. We ask your blessing in this hour. Come and pour out your Holy Spirit on us anew. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your mercy and grace. And we want our lives to reflect your goodness and your mercy. We pray for those who are hurting this morning those who are going through difficult times, those who carry in their hearts a heavy burden of sorrow. We ask that you would comfort them, be close to them, show them your mercy as well. And we ask that you would use us to be your people out in the world. Help us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ, going where you want us to go, doing what you want us to do, loving, serving, helping, forgiving, shining brightly, for you. Give us everything we need for the week ahead that we may honor you in all things, that we may be faithful to you, that we may live holy and godly lives through the grace of Jesus Christ. We make this prayer in Jesus' name as we pray now together the great prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, now it's time for our usher to come down. Do we have an usher? Richard, would you do the honor? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Richard. Sorry for the last second. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, David. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. You've blessed us with our beautiful church. We're so glad to have it and be together. Please accept these gifts in your honor and glory. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Barbara and Choir, for that beautiful message and song. Thank you for sharing your talents with us this morning. Well, today we're in week two of our sermon series called Following. We're talking about what it means to follow after God, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I invite you to hear our scripture this morning. This comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 35. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. And so Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Well, what comes to your mind when you hear the word servant? I think about some of the servants that I've seen in pop culture as I was growing up. I think about Alfred, who was Batman's butler, Bruce Wayne's butler. Bonus points, if you can tell me Alfred's last name after church without using your phone to Google the answer during the service. I know I've got some guys here who can do that already, but we'll see if anybody else can. Well, Alfred had to take care of everything else while Batman was off saving Gotham City from the bad guys. And I'm sure that washing Batman's clothes all the time wasn't that fun of a job to do, but he served. I think about Jeffrey, the, the wise cracking butler from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, if you ever saw that show. He, he never seemed to be very enthused about his job, but, but he did love the family and he always took good care of them. There's also uh, Lurch from the Adams family, if you ever saw that. And every time he was summoned, he always responded with these words, You rang. <laughs> always gave me a, a laugh when I saw that. There was even a, a show recently that was about servants and butlers called Downton Abbey, kind of showing the, the behind-the-scenes point of view of all of that stuff. Well, servant is not a very popular word in our world today. And the idea of being a servant isn't popular either. I mean, just the idea of serving somebody else is not wildly exciting. Serve yourself? Yeah. Take care of yourself? Yeah, that sounds good. Putting yourself first? Yeah, sign me up for that. But serve someone else? I'd rather not do that. Take care of others? Hard pass. Put somebody else ahead of yourself? No, thank you. But in the Bible, Jesus gives us a different picture here, doesn't he? Jesus puts servanthood right in the center of what it means to follow after him. It's the very core of discipleship, and that's so different from the ways of the world. So first of all today, I want us to remember the original call to the disciples. Jesus called to them and said, follow me. That's what he said to his would-be disciples out by the Sea of Galilee. Two important words, follow me. So we know that this whole Christian thing is about actually following Jesus and becoming who he wants us to be. Yes, we want to believe the right things. Yes, we want to have the correct theology. But all of that has to come together in following Jesus and living for him. And that kind of frees us up from having to be the kind of people who beat overs over the head with our faith, or, or we try to, to shove our religion down their throats. Because being a Christian is not about how loud we can be about our faith or about how angry we can be about our faith. It's not about proving ourselves right all the time. Being a Christian 
is simply about following Jesus the best we can. Listening to him, learning from him how to live life, and then humbly getting back up and following him when we mess up and fall short. I remember seeing a Peanuts cartoon strip where uh, Sally was talking to Linus about her great potential as an evangelist. And she said, oh, I would have made a great evangelist. And Linus is curious. He says, oh, really? Why is that? And she said, well, do you know the kid who sits behind me in school? I convinced him that my religion was better than his religion. And Linus was very curious at this point. He said, well, how did you do that? And that's when Sally sweetly replies, I beat him over the head with my lunchbox until he agreed with me. You know, that might not be the best way to be an evangelist, right? We might not get very far if we're just angrily beating people over the heads about being a Christian. The much preferred way, the Jesus way, is to simply follow Christ. And we want to be like him. We want to learn from him. We want to live our lives as he did, and we follow after his ways. The two disciples, James and John, haven't quite gotten this part figured out yet. So second, we learn that we cannot use Jesus for our own purposes. James and John, they want the seats of glory and honor. They both show up with a little boldness and a little cockiness. They say, Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And I'm sure Jesus was like, excuse me, what? Did did I hear you correctly? I bet Jesus gave them a stare like a school teacher. Y'all know the the stare that I'm talking about? Uh, The the glare that's supposed to stop you right in your tracks? My mother was a school teacher, so I got that glare all the time when I was at home growing up. Maybe you've been on the receiving end of that before. But the glare doesn't work for James and John. They press on. They say, hey, Jesus, let one of us sit at your right hand, the other at your left in your glory. They were asking for the seats of power and authority. They wanted the greatness that comes from being beside Jesus. There's just one problem with that. Jesus never called us to walk beside him. He calls us to walk behind him. He's leading the way. We are the followers. He's the one in charge. We are not. And so I wonder sometimes if we're just like James and John here, and we try to manipulate Jesus, we try to scheme and plan and arrange things to work out in our favor, we want to look good, we want to have all the power, we want Jesus to just bless our plans and make everything work out just great. But it's actually good news that Jesus can't be manipulated like that. We cannot control Jesus for our own ends. We're not in charge of him. We're not able to make him do what we want him to do. And so it's a lesson of humility this morning and of who is really in charge. I love to go uh, walking around town, and I'll often see people out walking their dogs as they're out getting some exercise. And I see them walking their dogs, and you can see it on their faces as they quickly realize that the dogs are now in charge of the walk. Uh, You can try to get the dog to move, but if they see a new flower or there's a new smell over here or or there's a bird, there's a squirrel, the dogs are going to go explore and do whatever they want to do. You're on their timetable at this point, and you better just buckle up because the dog is now walking you. And I thought about that when it comes to Jesus. We're not leading him. He's the one who's leading us. And the sooner we realize that, the better off we're going to be. And I think this had to be a humbling moment to James and John. He said, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? As in, can you take on the suffering that I'm about to take on through the cross? The implied answer is no, you can't. So stop trying to get out ahead of me and get behind me. That's why it's called following Jesus. Not having Jesus behind us so that we can lead the way forward. Third, we learn here that following Jesus is not about greatness. It's not about power. It's not about the best seats in the kingdom. Jesus says, you know that the Gentile rulers like to lord it over their people. Their their great leaders are tyrants over the people. Isn't that how the world works? This is what power looks like in the world. Ordering other people around, expecting others to do our bidding, Putting your own needs ahead of everyone else's. That's how the world shows authority and might. 
Notice how Jesus views this way of living. But it is not so among you. Jesus does not endorse the world's way of showing power and might and greatness. Instead, he displays another way. The kingdom way, the servant way. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. According to Jesus, greatness looks like a servant. Greatness looks like putting somebody else ahead of yourself. Greatness looks like putting your own agenda to the side to do something good for another. Now, there's a reason why the world doesn't like this idea of being a servant. Because it goes against everything they stand for. Everything they idolize. But it shall not be so among you. As Christians, servanthood is built into the very fabric of what it means to follow Jesus. Servanthood is what our lives are to be about. Jesus says, whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. The way of greatness in God's kingdom is by going to the back of the line. I remember being a kid in school, growing up in school, and the teacher would often make us line up in alphabetical order. And my name was alphabetically challenged. My last name, Varnell, with a V, like in Valentine. So I would almost always wind up at the back of the line. And it's not fun to be at the back of the line. If you're going to the lunchroom, back of the line is no good. If you're walking into a water break, a bathroom break, back of the line is no good. If you're going out to recess, back of the line is no good. They're going to have teams picked before you even make your way outside. And so if you were also alphabetically challenged, you can commiserate with me after church. But did you know with Jesus, we don't actually have anything to commiserate about? Jesus says, actually, back of the line is where it's at. This is who I am, and this is who I want you to be too. Last, slave, servant, back of the line. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. When we live as servants, we are most living like Jesus. When we live as servants, we are most living like Jesus. When we put others and their needs ahead of our own, that's when other people will start to see something different about us something special in our lives. So what does this mean for us moving forward? Well, we know that God's love in us compels us to live a different life. God's love in us compels us to live not the same as everybody else. We are distinct. We are unique. We don't blend in with the world around us. And I believe when the world sees that, when they see that we look different, when they see something different inside of us, They're going to be eager to know what we have. They're going to be eager to know who is inside of us. And then I believe we'll be prepared with our answer. We'll say, Jesus is inside of me. His love is inside of me. And he has transformed my life for the better. And I think that he can change yours too if you give him a chance. Because he is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Wow, that'll preach right there, right? I want to take a moment to encourage you this morning because I want to remind you of who you are. I want to remind you that you are, we are followers of Jesus. He comes calling, he comes welcoming us into God's kingdom and we're now his followers and we learn how to live life from him and what he teaches us is that true life is found in a life of service. True life is found in giving ourselves away. True life is found in what we can do for someone else versus what we can take from someone else. The world doesn't get that. The world doesn't understand this, but that's okay. We can be the ones who show them. We can be the ones who display a better way of life, the Jesus way of life. I know sometimes we hear the word servant or service, and and we think about, like, Mother Teresa. And you're like, well, I can't do that. I can't be Mother Teresa. I can't be one of these great saints in the church. Uh, Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you're right. We can't be like Mother Teresa. We can't be like someone else. But we can be ourselves, 
And we can use what God has given us. We can use our own personalities, our own talents. We can use our own kindness, our own wealth, our own possessions to be a servant. I think about someone like Miss Jewel Dent. Miss Jewel Dent is a lovely older member of our congregation who can't get out as much anymore. But Miss Jewel loves to send uh, greeting cards out to people. She sends them all the time for all kinds of occasions. Maybe you've been on the receiving end of a greeting card from Miss Jewel. It's such an encouragement to open up my mailbox and see a card from her in there. Uh, One day I was talking to her about this, and I asked her about it, and she said, well, I can't do much, but I can do that. Isn't that amazing? Think about what she's doing. She's doing a lot for the kingdom of God. What about you? What has God given you? How can God use you? What can you give to God in order to be a servant? It might not look like much in the world's eyes. That's just a card. But in God's eyes, it could be great. The world might look at our poor efforts and say, oh, there's nothing to that. But God, those things can be unbelievably excellent. There's a story in Scripture where Jesus feeds 5,000 people, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. It's a miracle. But you might remember that the story starts off with a little boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. But when Jesus gets that small amount, he miraculously feeds the entire multitude. John says, then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. I love that, as much as they wanted. What can God do with our willingness to serve in some small way? Even if we don't have much, what can it look like? In the hands of God. It can be huge, right? Or maybe unlike that boy, you actually do have a lot to contribute. You've got a lot of of means. You have financial wealth that you can contribute to the kingdom of God and to service. Are you using it? Are you using what God has blessed you with in God's ways? Or are you only using it for yourself? Serving ourselves, taking care of ourselves. I think the take home today as we remember who we are is to remember what we're called to do. I'm called to be a servant. You are called to be a servant. Don't look down your nose at that idea. Don't say servant. That doesn't sound good to me. Hard pass. Servant can change the world. Just look at Jesus. Imagine what God can do with a whole room filled with servants. God could change our town. God could change our county. God could change our world for the better. May the cry of your heart today be, Lord, I want to be a servant. Lord, I want to be a servant. Jesus goes to be a ransom for us on the cross. He goes to the cross to free us from our sins And now we're free to live as servants, just as he was. And living as a servant, we will be a wellspring of hope and blessing and love to our little corner of the world. And God will be truly glorified. Isn't that amazing? Are you able? Yeah. With God's help, we are. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the call to follow after Jesus, to follow after him, to be one of his people, to become who he wants us to be. And Lord, as we follow after Christ this morning, we ask that you would change our lives. We ask that you would transform our hearts and turn us into new people in this place today. Give us your Holy Spirit that we might serve you, that we might serve your church, that we might serve the world for your glory and for your good. Give us courage to be servants this week. Give us boldness to live our lives in service, not of ourselves, but of those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Page 530 is our closing hymn, 530 as we stand together. yes with God we are able to go and live the life of service to be a servant to those around us may we have the courage to do that may we have the boldness not to live like everybody else not to live selfish lives that are only turned inwards but lives that are turned outwards lives that have open hands lives that serve as Jesus served Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.